One of the questions that I've pondered many times on this channel is asking the question, what prevents you from using Linux? Now, this comes as a weird surprise to a lot of my audience that use Linux exclusively. There are actually a lot of people who watch this channel and many other Linux YouTubers who don't actually use Linux either at all or exclusively. Most of them actually spend most of their time on Windows or Mac. And still, they watch this channel or they watch other Linux YouTubers, and, you know, that surprises a lot of people. But there are many people in my audience that don't actually run Linux as their daily driver. And one of the questions that I always have for them and many other people have had for them over the years is, what, pre what prevents you from using Linux? This topic actually came up on Reddit and on Mastodon recently, and I'll put those posts in the... Uh, description below so you can actually go through them and the vast majority of the comments are all over the place actually you would think that there was just a few pain points left like we always talk about the big pain points to preventing people from using linux we talk about the installation right we talk about getting past secure boot and getting past the boot menu and, and actually burning a uh a uh, USB key, right? We, we get we talk about that, and we talk about the poor support for NVIDIA cards, or we talk about the lack of Adobe support. We talk about those three things, and then we kind of pre pretend that that's it. Those are the big ones. Therefore, that's what is causing, you know, if we solve just those three problems, everyone would use Linux, and it would be awesome, and we'd no have no longer have any need of Windows or Mac. But it's really not that simple. There's actually a lot of pain points still with Linux that we don't really pay attention to because we're Linux fans or just because we don't we don't experience those problems. Now, some of the problems that I saw in the threads that I'm going to link to in the description below were things that either are skill issues, right? And I, I, I absolutely despise people who, you know, when someone asks a question or has a problem, you know, they're trying to troubleshoot something and then the person responds skill issue i hate that but but some people just don't have the interest in learning how to solve something or they don't have the time or they don't have the inclination whatever to solve something therefore they don't have the skill to solve it so they just use windows because that's what they know that's what they have the skills to use that's fine and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people still use windows and mac another cause of some of those pain points isn't a skill issue but instead lies with just disinterest a lot of people do have interest in linux but they don't have that much interest in linux so much so that they you know take the steps to go through and actually use it because it does as i've talked about many times on this channel actually require quite a bit of effort to switch from windows to linux you can't just do it i mean you can just do it but you're going to be if you're not prepared for the changes that you're going to have to make it's going to be a rough journey for you and and nine times out of ten if you're in that situation where you just did it and you didn't prepare for it you're probably going to eventually bet end up back on where you started from either mac or, or windows that's just kind of the way it actually works for a lot of people and that's still something that we as the linux community kind of have to keep in mind is that not everyone is a linux nerd not everyone is. Uh, we think that they are because we, we, we as a Linux community surround ourselves with Linux nerds. Therefore, we think that everyone is a Linux nerd. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, it would be awesome if everyone was a Linux nerd, but it's just absolutely not the case. The vast majority of people, and I, we shouldn't tell anybody this, but the vast majority of people aren't nerds at all, right? They're just normal people, <laughs> you know? The vast majority of people just use their computers as tools they go to their computer to get a job done you know maybe they do it for work or if they you know it's at home or whatever they use it to check email or maybe browse youtube but the vast majority of people aren't even browsing youtube on their computers they're doing it on their cellular device right it's just they don't people don't use their computers like they used to right when i first got my computer back in the early 2000s you know, we went to CompUSA and got a whole bunch of card making software and all this free stuff because back in the day you actually had to go to the store to buy software. And, and you know, that was the, and even before that, when, you know, I was in school, computers were neat. They were things that interested almost everybody because they were still fairly new in the 90s. You know, yes, they'd been around for a long time, but they didn't have, you know, vast pr proliferation inside of public schools here in the United States until the 90s. And that's when I was in, you know, did most of my schooling was in the 90s. And, you know, that that's what got me interested in computers. I got a lot of people interested in computers. But these days, the you know, if you were born in the late 90s or beyond, 
you've probably always had a smartphone or you, you've always had a computer in your house. It's not something special to you. It's something that has always been there, right? And well, that's obviously a broad generalization, but it does cover a lot of people. They just don't consider a computer a hobby like a lot of us do, a lot of us Linux nerds do. They consider it just a tool. And a lot of them don't even use that tool anymore. They're using a tablet or they're using their smartphone to do all of their computing services. And that's just what they do, right? That's just the reality of it. And we forget that sometimes as Linux nerds that not everyone is like us. Another area that really surprised me going through the... Actually, I could probably just show you guys the threads that I'm talking about. If I go through some of the stuff that's in this thread here on Reddit and even on on Mastodon, one of the things that surprised me about how often it actually came up was gaming. Because we've been tooting our own horn for the last two years about how awesome gaming has become on Linux, right? Ever since the Steam Deck came out and Proton has gotten really good and you can use a butt ton of games on Linux that you never were before. Like, I was playing Madden on Linux the other day. I've played Forza 5, which is exclusively a, a Windows game, right? I've played it on my Steam Deck, of all things, and it runs perfectly fine. I've played Halo, which has always been like an Xbox exclusive game, and it played wonderfully on Linux. So there are tons of examples that we've taken for granted over the course of the last two years that, to us, prove that Linux is now ready for gaming. But anti-cheat is still a big, big deal for a lot of games. And while I can't name those games, I mean, this person here talks about Destiny 2 and Apex Legends, but I'm pretty sure Fortnite is also in on that. And there are several other big, big, big games that just don't run on Linux, probably never will run on Linux, and especially in the case of Destiny 2, the developers of that have specifically come out and said, no, there's no Linux support, never going to happen. Uh, the Epic guys, the ones that are behind the, uh, Fortnite, they've come out and said and tell the Steam Deck has t tens of millions of users, they're not supporting Linux. They actually had, that when, when they purchased Rocket League, they actually pulled the Linux version off of their servers and disabled Linux support completely. If you want to run Rocket League now, you have to run it inside of Proton, and because of anti-cheat, you can't play online, at least as far as I know, at least the last time I tried, it just doesn't work, right? So there are many games that we sometimes forget about as Linux nerds that just don't run on Linux at all because of this problem, right? And... I think that a lot of gamers, like actual, like real time gamers that aren't Linux gamers, but are just gamers, like they have a dedicated, awesome $4,000 PC rig that has a 4090 and maybe two of them. And, you know, you know, they have custom water cooling loops and all this stuff. Those types of gamers who spend thousands and thousands of hours gaming in their lifetime, those guys see us touting Linux as gaming ready and laugh at us because it's not as gaming ready as we like to make it out to be. So this is another big pain point for us that we don't really talk as much about as we probably should, especially outside of the game sphere. I know a lot of Linux gamers still do understand this problem. So I'm not just saying, like, if you're a Linux gamer, you don't realize that anti-cheat is a thing. You obviously do. But the rest of us who aren't really into the gaming scene, but who have still been riding high on touting how awesome gaming is to the rest of the world, we have forgotten about this, or at least some of us have, and it's still a problem, right? It's still one of those things. Another thing that I've saw in this thread are problems with the transition from Xorg to Wayland, specifically when it comes to gaming and also NVIDIA support. So a lot of people have been left behind by this transition from Xorg to Wayland because they have basically felt themselves being forced to do so because a lot of desktop environments have moved exclusively to Wayland and have basically depreciated their Xorg support because of obviously good reasons, but it still has happened. So like Ubuntu and Gnome and KDE and Fedora and a whole bunch of other distros and desktop environments have either gone directly to only supporting Wayland and just kind of having Xorg there as a fallback just in case to actually getting rid of Xorg altogether. And a lot of times this transition has left people behind, specifically people who have specific versions of certain NVIDIA cards. Like, they don't 
have the latest and greatest that supports Wayland fairly well, they have an older card that doesn't have the Wayland support that we take for granted nowadays, right? So I've seen that a lot of times in this thread. There's also a lot of things like Adobe and AutoCAD, which are still problems to this day and will always be problems. Uh, here's another one that says anti-cheat. And then there's ones like this one here that have basically said that they're willing to switch to Linux, but are prevented to do so because of their family members. Not necessarily because their family members are saying, no, you can't use Linux, but mostly because they either share a computer with their significant other or their family, or like this person here, or because they don't want to have to support two different operating systems inside of their home. Like if they have two different computers and one person just will not or does not want to switch to Linux, that kind of forces them, if they don't want to support both, to stick with what their significant other or their family member does, right? So there's the whole point of this isn't because I'm going to go through this entire thread. Like I said, I'll link it below. But there are way more pain points to switching to Linux than we think about when we talk about this, right? We, 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 we talk until we're blue in the face about the lack of Adobe support, even the NVIDIA stuff we've talked about many, many times over the years, right? Things like the difficulty of installation, which is something that I've harped on on this channel many times over the course of the last three years. Those are all big pain points, right? That, that I, I do still think that are obviously still there and that are preventing a lot of people from trying Linux. Adobe is like a big, big one. But there are many other points, pain points that prevent people from using Linux full time. And I do think that this is something that we do have to kind of think about, especially people who consider themselves Linux evangelists that try to get other people to switch to Linux. We tend to oversimplify the process of switching from Windows to Linux. Like all you need to do is find yourself a distribution that looks like Windows and you're going to be fine. You're going to be, you're going to be great. Sure. You'll have to find some applications that, you know, all, that are alternatives to what you'll use on windows, but you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine, but maybe not. Right. Everyone's situation is different. Some of them have specific hardware needs. Like they have peripherals that just don't work on Linux. Things like, you know, audio interfaces or gaming interfaces that you use gaming headsets, whatever, you know, a lot of people have peripherals that just won't work with Linux. And they're obviously have spent money on those things and going out and buying something that does work with Linux is probably not an option, right? The economy is terrible. And not everybody has discretionary income just to replace something that works perfectly fine just because they want to be a nerd like the rest of us who use Linux, right? So these pain points are things that we do need to keep in mind, especially when we th try to convince others to use Linux because not everybody can. And, and it's not always a skill issue. Like sometimes, sometimes it is a skill issue. Some, sometimes it's, you know, they just, they just don't want to develop the skills, right? That's fine. Some, sometimes they don't have the time or interest or whatever. All those things are, are possibilities when it comes to why someone doesn't use Linux. But there are also legitimate roadblocks to a lot of people actually using Linux. And it's not that they don't want to. Some A lot of the people in these threads who say they can't switch, they legitimately do want to switch and use Linux full time because they really, really like Linux. But there are these certain things that they do using their computers that just don't work well on Linux. And that is an issue because developers do have a habit sometimes of solving problems that aren't necessarily problems that need to be solved. They create, you know, and that's fine because they have their own interests. They want to solve problems for themselves, not necessarily solve problems for the great masses who would then thank them for solving a problem. They're solving a specific problem for them and maybe their small community, right? That's perfect. That's the way development works and that's perfectly fine. But you can see the problem here, right? That a lot of people who are on the outside looking in who want to switch and have these pain points see developers solve problems that weren't really problems that need to be solved, like creating another package manager or another package format. Yeah, it doesn't really need to be done. Let's solve one of these other problems first. You know, and, and you know, they see that and they're like, well, you know, I'm never going to be able to switch to Linux because these problems are never going to be solved. Now, some of these problems like anti-cheat aren't things that our developers can actually solve at all. Those, those are going to be things that are only going to be solved when and if Linux has enough actual users to justify those companies you know, supporting Linux and getting rid of the anti-cheat that doesn't support Linux. And it's also, Linux has, I've talked about this before, when it, specifically when it comes to anti-cheat, Linux has a, a, a image problem. You use Linux, you're a hacker. 
right? You're a cheater at games or whatever. You know, it, it, a lot of the companies who use anti-cheat to prevent you from using Linux do so because people, a lot of people in the past have used Linux to cheat at those games. So they automatically have blanketed all Linux users as cheaters. Therefore, they don't want to you know, support them through anti-cheat, right? Now, there are obviously more technical reasons for that. The way anti-cheat works doesn't really mesh well with the Linux kernel, at least in some cases. Uh, but a lot of that stuff has been solved already. There are other versions of anti-cheat. They, they've also got some workarounds with Wine and stuff. Like, Wine now works and supports a lot of the anti-cheat softwares. So, that the technical stuff has mostly been solved, but there's still that image problem that a lot of people actually, you know, a lot of companies actually have, a lot, especially a lot of gaming companies actually have, and that's another issue on top of all this stuff, right? So, a lot of the people who want to switch to Linux see these problems as never going to be solved, therefore they they're, have entrenched themselves in the ecosystem that they already exist in because the stuff that they want to do actually works. Even if they have big, big problems with Windows or big, big problems with Mac, the fact that they can still do the stuff that they want to do wipes away those, most of those problems, right? And, and despite their interest in switching to Linux, without those problems being solved, there's not much they can do to actually do to take the plunge and switch to Linux. And as a community, the Linux community, we just kind of need, I think we do need to keep this in mind as we preach. Because a lot of, I do this too. I do this a lot of my videos. I preach to people. It's not. It's not. A, it's not a good habit to have. But but it's true. We do tend to preach to, to others on the outside, saying how awesome Linux is. But we have to also have to remember that even we as Linux nerds have problems a lot of times with Linux, and we do tend to forget that when we're talking about how awesome Linux is. So just something to keep in mind. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on any of this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon, Kofi, and the YouTube membership stuff. All that stuff will be in the video description below. You can also head on over to the merch shop, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you can find desk mats and hoodies and hats and cups and mugs and all sorts of stuff, t-shirts, all that stuff. All the proceeds from that go directly to support the channel, which means more Linux content for you guys. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just wouldn't have made anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Seriously, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.